All right, I'm gonna go over the basics of how one of these things works. So you'll uh, have your clutch plate here attached to these splines. And when you engage your clutch, it, it synchronizes it with the engine speed. And so then this shaft will turn and it transmits power through the, the input shaft is what this is called. Then you have gears that drive and then you have gears that are driven. And so for example, this is first gear and first gear is uh, small on the input shaft and big on the output. And that way you can multiply your torque. So for every one time that the engine turns over, um, sorry, for every uh, like 3.6 times the engine turns, the output shaft turns once, okay? Um, this is reverse. There's a little uh, 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 gear down in here that engages to make reverse work and then it spins the opposite direction because it, uh, it uh, um, uses that to, to having three gears turns it the opposite way. Then you have second gear here and you have third, fourth, and fifth. And if you notice, on fifth gear here, the driving gear is significantly larger than the driven gear, and this gives it the overdrive, versus these two are the same diameter, so this is a one-to-one -one ratio, that's your fourth gear there. And then what you have in here is you have things called synchros, and you see how I can move this little brass uh, piece back and forth? And it has little gates that line up, and uh, those when you uh, have transmission fluid in here and everything else, as you start to apply pressure to this, it spins up and aligns with the, uh, where the shifter mechanism or the shift uh, mechanism actually engages the gear at. And then that will hold these, uh, these gears together. So if I spin this here and I, uh, if I, sorry, if I hold my pinion here, oops, I mean, I'm engaged in a gear. Let me shift into neutral. So I've shifted this into neutral. And so if I hold the output, you can see that the uh, first gear and second gear are turning, but they're not connected to the pinion right now. And so if I were to slide this and engage the synchros, and let's see if I can do that. So there's second gear is now engaged and so I can't hold that pinion back. You have a little bit better view of the synchro in there. See how I can move it back and forth. And so that little bit of wiggle room allows the mechanism that's attached to uh, uh, like that's attached here. It allows it to slide and engage and lock the output shaft with the gear that you select. And so uh, they work different ways. You can see there's a shift mechanism on first and second. There's another one on third and fourth, and there's another one on fifth. And so those are all controlled by your shift fork. And so when you move your shifter around, um, it moves these different linkage rods so that you engage different gears, okay? And uh, so then you have your center differential here which if you look has two different splines inside of it, as here and then a little bit further. And there's actually some splines in the back that go to the rear axle. Um, and when I turn this, you see how it turns the output shaft, but the pinion is independent. This connects the, the output shaft with the rear axle and the front axle. And so as I spin this, you can kind of get an idea. Let's see if we can get this aligned. There we go. Start spinning. And uh, so then your final drive is set on the ratio between your pinion and your ring gear. One of the things that I find really cool about this, uh, this gear system, is if you notice, some gears are straight cut. For example, the reverse gear is straight cut and then some are helical. And then you have, this is actually called hypoid, but that's a little bit different setup. But, um, and so the helical gears, the way they engage, as if you look at that as I spin it, the contact pattern begins, if I go the opposite direction, it begins on this shoulder and then moves across the face of the gear and then leaves on that shoulder. So if I turn that, you can kind of imagine that. 
Um, this provides a little bit of advantage in, in noise, and you engage about a little over two teeth for uh, a, a, in contact any one gut at one time, versus a straight cut gear. I forgot what the exact ratio is. It's something like 1.3 teeth are engaged. But the straight cut gear, they engage immediately on the face. And so you actually have more strength with the straight cut gear than you do with a, the same width helical gear um, because you're kind of uh, applying motion on the corner of the gear and then it's moving across the face. That also provides uh, some thrust direction where it actually pushes it sideways as opposed to just a rotational. Um, and so there's there's strengths and weaknesses to, to different gear types. And then your hypoid gear, like the differential, let me engage this and actually I'll just turn it here. You can see here, it does that same sort of thing. Like if I walk it this way, you can see that it begins contacting right on the inside tooth. And then that energy transfers across the, the face of the gear. And uh, so again, strengths and weaknesses of both designs. Yeah, so that's a basic um, uh, transmission. Um, the output shaft connects here for the rear axles. And so if I were to get that to engage correctly, actually, sorry, I have the wrong one. This is the output here. This was engaged inside the, the uh, uh, center differential. And then this piece here would connect to your drive shaft. Oops, there we go. And you can see this goes in the center differential and then your drive shaft here has splines inside that connect to those splines there. And, uh, and then you have a one-to-one -one gear that transfers the energy to the back axles. So pretty clever system how the all-wheel drive works.